Are you, are you with us there, Kerry? Yeah, yes, I'm very sorry. Uh, I, I believe that you, was, you just broke up at the very end there, but I think, I think the message came across. Uh, mm. Is there, again, anything else? Uh, and I, I believe we're probably going to go to a, a break just before the end of the show here. Uh, we, we have about um, 15, 20 minutes. I'm not sure how long. Um, but is there anything else that you think uh, we should address? Because you were talking back a, a, a few moments ago about the nature of the cabal and how far reaching it is. And and that's something that, I, again, that I, I think bears repeating and bears going into in a little more detail if we have time for it here. Um, sure, I wonder if you sure. could sketch out um, because unfortunately, what's happening here on the planet is is that the the powers that be or that that think they are, so to speak, <laughs> um, they are deceiving people as to where their power comes from, and and that's that increases the the, the deception, the levels of confusion, and and at the same time, with what's going on in Egypt, uh, the rebellions and the the things that are happening in, in Libya and so on, people are waking up everywhere around the globe. And that is changing the equation for the powers that be very seriously. And, and I'd, I'd love it if you would talk about that. Yeah, the, the, the great shift of the ages is upon us. And, and it's the shift that's happening, you know, the, the shift is happening inside each and every one of us. And it starts, you know, like Michael Jackson, the Michael Jackson song, The Man in the Mirror. Brilliant song because it really summarises what we're talking about here. And we, it begins with us. When you change, the world around you changes. And we are the creators of this reality collectively and, uh, and also with the consciousness of the planet and the solar system and the galaxy. So once you connect with that again... You, um, you end up changing your reality. And that's what's happening with people. They're, they're starting to get this connection happening, rising up inside of themselves because their greater beings are now coming through. And, um, and it's happening. They're, they're seeing through the lies. They're seeing through the deception because it's like, um, it's like what the sword represents. You know, what is the sword? And I see myself as a sword carrier, and I'm sure you do too, Carrie, because when you wield that sword, um, it really is, is truth. It's knowledge. And it cuts through the lies and the deception. And that's why Muhammad said, spread Islam why via the sword. He didn't mean go around killing people. He just meant use knowledge and wisdom. That's why you've got the sword of Troy. That's why you've got Excalibur. And that's why you've got, you know, yes. um, uh, you know. All- actually, one of my favorite sayings is, 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 is uh, to paraphrase uh, what they said, Christ said, I came not to bring peace, but to bring a sword. What he was talking about was, to, to being able to cut through and to use discernment to be able to decide where you stand and to stand in your own light um, and, and to use that mind that, that you, were, you were born with, so to speak. Exactly, because the crucifix on the mound is no different to Excalibur in the stone. It means exactly the same thing. It's the same symbolism. And uh, Jesus is nailed to that cross because it symbolizes a death of, uh, of wisdom and knowledge and plunged this earth into the dark ages. And so really understanding all the symbolism and the concepts that went on there anyway, there's, uh, we won't get into that now, but this cabal and the power where this cabal, where do they get it from? And, you know, who's, who's the ruling elite's overlords? Because they're not the, the top end of the uh, hierarchical structure. And who's their overlords' overlords? And who's those overlords' overlords? And you realize it actually goes through. And like I said, the moon, Mars, Orion, then intergalactic. And then you start getting these massive collective hive minds. And then these big collectives join together to a bigger collective. And the structures continue to get to these universal paradigms. And they're enormous, enormous vibrational paradigms with thousands of extraterrestrials that have been assimilated into these paradigms. And this is what I'm trying to get people to understand these are massive, massive collectives because they have been developed over eons and eons of evolution in this universe. And, uh, and you've got to be able to see through it. If you just fall for what an extraterrestrial race is going to tell you, then that's uh, your journey. Good luck to you. But it's not where I'm going. Um, I've taken the journey myself and I've seen it for myself. And when you start connecting with your true inner heart, your, your own being, the part of you that created this life that you're having, 
and you will find out for yourself too what's really going on here. Absolutely. Uh, now, I, I don't know, maybe you can help me out if, if we hear the, the music for the break because uh, it seems like I'm my, my connection here is going in and out. Uh, George, I, I have gotten into the chat room here and I'm, I'm getting a few questions from the audience. Uh, one person is asking the following question. Uh, once we enter the fifth dimension and we send Mother Earth, part of our being, okay, we have to come back on the break and go into this question. Whistleblower Radio, we're talking to George Cavasilas. We have just about 10 minutes or less left on the show. We've got a lot of questions coming fast and furious here on the chat room that I was finally able to assess. Um, so, so, George, I don't know if I'm going to be able to uh, to pick up the question that, that someone was asking. I, I think that I remember it well enough. What they were asking was, they seemed to feel that, that as we moved into the fifth dimension, that our the body that was left on Earth, they were asking what it would look like. Um, I, I don't think they mean literally. Uh, I think they meant, you know, in other words, what would life be consist of? perhaps is is a little more uh to the point of the question it is is that something you would like to address oh sure i can address that yeah because the um chakra body is the 4d body and then um the journeys that i've taken into the 5d that i know um you have a single energetic center because you're back in oneness and harmony with creation it's like um some people can use the label heaven so the 5d that i speak of is the lowest vibratory levels of heaven because then you go five six seven d and uh, after the seventh dimension, there's no more physical form. It's just pure energy after that. So um, that's the model that I present, and that can be found on my talks and on my website. So um, the embodiments, when we go to the 5D, that's not ascension. It, it is ascending back to that state, but it's not all of ascension. That's just a step in ascension. Um, we'll, be, we'll be preparing from that, and that's the platform we actually ascend um, on that platform. And that's, um, we'll be in that state while Mother Earth uh, cleanses her body and she finds centre again. So she's got to straighten up on her access because just as any being that needs to ascend, you need to find centre. So if Mother Earth is ascending, she's going to find centre. And that's why we're going to have a pole shift because she's just got to straighten up on her axis and find centre again because the, um, the wobble that we've had in the procession of the equinoxes have uh, served their purpose and she doesn't need it anymore. And that's why the cycle doesn't finish on December 21, 2012. It actually finishes on the first equinox of 2013. So March 21, 2013 is when the actual cycle ends because uh, it's not the procession of the solstices. It's actually the procession of the equinoxes. And a lot of people seem to miss that point. And so the bodies we're <laughs> going to have once, once we ascend um, is uh, there will be no energetic centres because we will have graduated and become uh, universal beings. So you'll have a planetary body and, uh, and, and a planetary race of beings that vibrate the universal light energy. And from my understanding, it's going to be a really gentle magenta color. That's my understanding. Now, I could be wrong about that, but it's just my understanding. That's what it's going to be. That's what I feel it's going to be. And, uh, and then an aspect of our consciousness will go and start creating a universe using the construct of light because we will have gone through all the possibilities and outcomes in this universe, exhausted them all on every level of life, and we've now come to Earth to rebalance everything and attain that um, state of universal consciousness. Okay, um, I've got a question here uh, talking about the unfoldment of events between now and the, the end of the year. Do you want to talk about that at all? Well, um, I don't have access to too much of the, um, the, the events, the detailed events, um, but what I can say is towards the end of the year is when I feel the organic openings to the fifth dimension will open up. Now, I'm not talking about technological wormholes, stargates, anything like that. The, um, the sacred geometrical symbol that I use for this opening is the Vesica Pisces. And um, the reason I, I know it to be that, like it's, it's what I resonate with, is because it represents the womb of the mother. And so if we're going to have organic openings and the energetic patterns around that is going to be of a feminine nature. So the, the, the fish of, of, of Jesus is not a male thing. It's actually a female thing if people were to understand the real truth behind that whole um, scenario. So it's, um, it's an organic opening on the earth 
through to the fifth dimension and we will just know. It'll be like this, this internal knowing. Uh, people will be guided intuitively and they'll be able to tell distinctively the difference between a false synthetic uh, opening and a true organic opening. And uh, sorry to okay. uh, no, uh, I had a pause there, but uh, those doorways are going to open around the end of this year and then they'll shut on the 21st of December 2012. Uh, okay, uh, so you feel the doors will will shut. What will happen after that? That's when Mother Earth will start straightening up on her axis. So it'll be really dangerous to be out here. That by that time, there's not going to be many people at all because even before December 1, 2012, December 21, 2012, around the middle of next year, there's going to be the mass evacuation of the planet. So all the people that will be lured onto those ships will go on the ships. All the people that will be lured into underground bases... And that's another thing. And I'd like to send out a message to the ruling elite and the shadow government. And uh, they know me because uh, they've interacted with me on many occasions throughout my life. I want you to listen and I want you to listen real good. Um, for those who are not aware of me, I'm going to tell you now something very important. You who are being lured into these underground bases who think they're in front of the people, you who think you are going somewhere safe, I'm telling you now you are being lured to your demise. And you're either going to be cornered down there and you're going to have to leave through a technological stargate or you'll be left to perish because the Earth's crust is going to um, is no longer serving its purpose and Mother Earth has to shed her skin. So I categorically tell you, if you have an issue with that, come and see me. I will tell you straight to your face. I have no fear around that because the authorities know exactly um, what I'm about down here and uh, you are all being played for fools and you really are. The shadow government and the ruling elite, I'm telling you straight, you are being played for fools. And uh, if you have an yes. issue with that, come and see me. Okay, I appreciate that, George. Uh, also, I do want you to put a cautionary note about the ships that people will, uh, will, will, will take, uh, you know, will evacuate on that are going to be deceived in that regard. Yeah. Okay, oh, great. we can go ahead and say it very quickly while the music goes. You, you, we still have a tiny bit of time here. Okay, great caution with that. They're leaving it right to the last moment. So um, when you've got no other choice, you're just going to take whatever hand reaches out to offer a way out. So be careful of that. Love and blessings to our human family. Thank you, Kerry. Thank you, George, very much. Uh, we'll do this again soon. Uh, take care and I and bless you, okay? Yeah, thank you.